Hello and welcome to Awesome Bros. This week, it's award season. And no, I'm not talking about the Oscars. Are the Oscars soon? No. No. <laughs> For an open window on a crappy world Max and Chris from Ups and Rude Ups and All right, so this week we'll be taking a look at uh, beer awards, uh, beer competition, and, and everything that has to do with, with that. But before we start, um, we've got new shirts. Uh, I've got a V-neck. Chris, you got a normal t-shirt? Yeah, there's a little thing in the back. It looks great. Like It looks awesome. I'm a huge fan of these shirts. Um, it's been, I guess, three years in the making. Yeah, we finally have them. So if you want your own shirt, uh, check out the link down there. It's going to bring you directly to a page where you can buy a shirt. Exactly. And special shout out to David Buis, which designed the drawing that we have in the back featuring the hot version of me and Max dancing to 80s music. And I find it so fun because we're both born in the 90s, which <laughs> makes it just perfect. <laughs> It's, it's a great drawing. David Buis is a phenomenal artist. I'm very happy to have him featured on our shirt. Uh, or, or is it us that's features on, on his drawing? I don't know how to put it. Uh, so what, what's, it what's the name of the channel for this, uh, the website for this, Chris? So it's represent.com slash opsandbros if you want to find yourself one of the sweetest merch in the beer game. I'm so proud to talk about that. Let, let, let's, let's, let's get a shot of that. That's a cool t-shirt, looking swanky. You have the little hop on the front, boop, and then... It, it, yeah, the design is really good. Uh, I'm very happy that we could fit some, some v-necks in there because I'm a big fan, and maybe we'll have some tanks at some point. That oh, would be yes, awesome. Yes. Um, so anyways, this week we're talking about beer awards, uh, more specifically the World Beer Awards, the World exactly. Award, Awards of Beer. World Beer Awards. What are they, what it is, and what does it eat during winter time. So the World Beer Award started from my research back in 2007. Um, it could be a little bit before, I'm not sure, but in 2007, this is where you got your first World Beer winners. It took about four to five years for the World Beer Awards to uh, build itself in credibility, but also build some categories to feature the beers that were represented. So of course, there's a GABF award, which is the Great American Beer Festival Awards that's happening. Um, I think it's in October coming up, something like that. But the World Beer Awards, it's one of the awards that I was seeing a little bit more here in Quebec. I don't know why, but there's a couple of breweries here in Quebec and in Ontario that are winning every single year, which is a <laughs> nice little clap for them. But... <clears throat> If you look at the World Beer Awards, it's kind of like a big organization because you have judges coming from all different corners of the world. So you have judges from Brazil, Canada, US and UK judging the beer every single year. And there's a lot of judges. I, I went through the whole list and there are a bunch of different beer experts, beer sommeliers, cicerones. Uh, there's a couple of beer writers, uh, not sure if we can state that there's some influencers in there, but maybe we'll see ourselves on that list one day, Max. That could be pretty cool to actually participate and, and judge beer at a, a more professional level. That'd be awesome. That would be I'm awesome. No. But what I want to talk about is also the way it works in general. So let's say you're a brewery and you want to enter one of those contests. First off, you gotta send off a couple of beers so they can sample them. And then you gotta pay a fee. We're talking about $250 for, uh, Canadian dollars for this specific award and 12 beers that you have to send to Toronto if you're in Canada. So of course, yes, we're talking World Beer Awards, but if you are a brewery that comes from Ethiopia, uh, you got to find like the closest way. I think you need to send it to UK. So shipping wise, it starts to get 
very hefty and I can't imagine like a very small brewery who's bringing amazing products getting access to those kinds of awards. So I feel that it's somewhat limited for the little, little smaller guys that can't really afford to do this sort of marketing for their own brewery. Yeah, I've worked for breweries in the past where um, they were just just big enough to start sending beers, but the, the big problem with just sending beers, you have to find the right category for the product that you're you're launching, that you're yeah. trying to get an award for. So you're not really playing towards the quality of that beer. You got to play to style in a lot of those cases. There's a few ways to uh, judge out the CBAs, so Canadian Beer Award, uh, have their own categories for a bunch of beers, and then you've got the BJCP, which is the Beer Judge Certificate Program, uh, that also has a bunch of categories. Now, for the most part, those categories kind of intermingle very, very well. But then you've got some weird stuff like milkshake IPAs that are not featured in the, in the BJCP, but are in the CBAs, if I'm not mistaken. And I think that's one of those weird styles. No, uh, no, uh, not, not milkshake. It's the session IPA. Session yes. IPA is the example I want yes. to give. I think it's session falls IPAs in are specialty beer, not even IPAs. I'm yeah. not sure. And you. New England style IPA, same thing, not in the BJCP, but in the CBAs. Uh, and I believe they're in the uh, World Beer Awards as well. They, they do have different categories. Everyone's yeah. kind of analyzing a bunch of styles and giving their own notes. But if you followed a style in the BJCP and the numbers don't match on the CBAs, you could get knocked for it in some ways. All that to say, Great concept. Uh, I like the fact that breweries can send out beer and try to get prizes for. And yeah, yeah. as a consumer, it's kind of cool to go like, oh, this beer won gold. Yeah. Or silver or just a prize of that competition. Yeah. And it does give some legitimacy to the brewery who has that prize. Yeah. Now, is it 100% worth it? In most cases, I'd, I'd say no. It's a marketing thing. If you don't want to be an award-winning brewery, you don't have to be. Yeah. Is it, is it gonna change your sales? Probably not that much, but there's some pride that comes with with winning yeah. a, a medal in a category for a beer that you've submitted. That's pretty cool. Uh, and yeah, there, there, there's know. something very cool behind winning awards. Like you can say pretty much everything against awards. Uh, when I was working in a brewery, I had the opportunity to attend the Golden Tap Awards out there in Ontario, which uh, celebrates the beer in Ontario and give awards to the best beers in different styles. And uh, we won actually gold for the F of Eisen back in like a couple of years ago. And I was super stoked. Like it's not something you really <laughs> expect from it, but it's it gives you uh, extra leverage when you're trying to sell your own beer and when you try to make it in this very crowded market. I think it's a good way to just flash off, show off your skills in front of others and also to meet up with new breweries or folks that maybe live a little bit too far. I'm talking about CBAs that uh, you meet people from Vancouver, from Halifax, all in one spot. Mm -hmm. Having those awards really bring people together. But also it shows that you know you're doing something right. Uh, if you are a small brewery big enough to send in your beer and you want a prize for it, you know that okay, well at least you have one great product behind you that you can keep on going uh, and understand that you are making quality beer at this point. Yeah. Uh, which is very important for the smaller players that are getting in and can get into those awards and can get prizes. Uh, um, I believe this year's CBAs, I know we're supposed to be talking about the other ones, but CBA, the Brewery of the Year in, no, yeah, in Ontario, sorry. Did I say CBAs? CBAs it is Canadian, CBAs. Golden yeah, Tap is Ontario. Ontario. It was CBAs. Uh, Clifford won yeah. the Brewery of the Year, which is kind of amazing. It's really cool, especially for a brewery of their size yeah. and with the quality of product they've been making. Very proud for them, uh, and it's it's just nice. It's nice to know yeah, that they know are about making that. quality beer, even if you don't win in that category. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, competition. Speaking awards, of winning stuff like that. Yeah, but speaking of winning in a category. Me and Max, we want to try something, yeah. and we want to know if you guys will be up for it. We're challenging you guys into making us beer personalities of the year at the Golden Tap Awards. Do you think we can yeah, make it? 
I think it's I think it's pretty awesome. Uh, I think we're quality vloggers and vloggers from uh, from Ontario, and we would have a shot. But we do need you guys to go vote uh, for for our channel and for us. Uh, and yeah, that'd be really cool. I mean, again, would it change anything? No. I uh, get bragging rights, and that's about it. I like having bragging rights. That's pretty cool, right? <laughs> I love flexing. Now that we have merch, we can flex about our words. Like we'll be the probably the best douchebags out there on the uh, beer internet sphere. <laughs> and internet loves douchebags. Kind of. Yeah, I mean, with a name like Hops and Bros, we're. Yeah. Anyways, if you like the video, please leave a like, subscribe, share with your friends, go check us out at the Golden uh, Tap Awards, vote for us, buy some shirts, buy the merch, new merch, pretty awesome, selling out, but that's okay, because that just means we can make more content for you guys, so anyways, we'll see you in the next episode, or webisode, considering it's on the internet. Ooh.